The enemy is busy. He is on plan. He is on attack. And listen, let me tell you, word of caution, he is not where, who are attacking the way that you believe that he is. Is that man, I'm going to tell you, he is intentional beyond uh, is that the devil is nobody to play with. Do not for a second believe you know how the plan of attack works over your life and or over anybody else. Is that uh, man, he is intentional in distractions. If he can just keep you distracted long enough, long enough, then he absolutely has won. Is that I believe that God would open our eyes in Genesis chapter 2. Three, uh, with the fall of man is that we can see um, the things around us is that man like I, I'm, I'm starting to look at things differently. I think if you notice in reading the Bible for yourself that you would see things a little bit clear, a little bit differently in translation that some things make sense and some things don't. Uh, is that uh, it talks about them having sight for the trees and then it is that uh, when Adam eats his eyes are open. And he saw this and saw that um, is that I think we miss things through translation for where it is for prejudice, for how we are and how we live on today is that they were naked. Why would we subscribe a lot of the things to be how it is today? Be it this is thousands of years after sin is that we're looking at that text in Genesis chapter uh, two, where it says uh, uh, God says um, it's not good that man should be alone. And I think uh, we were through you know, manipulation in translation or interpretation uh, that we would get that verse wrong a lot of the times. I'm not saying that I have it right. I'm not saying somebody else has it right and are wrong, but I think that we would miss, I think, a lot of things in scripture uh, for bias basis is that if the devil could not touch the word of God, he would definitely touch how you interpret the word of God. And so I believe on today that uh, I would be, for example, using uh, that verse in Genesis chapter two, I think it's somewhere around nine or 10, I'm not sure, that says uh, it is not good uh, that man should be alone. They said, I wanna come and remove that comma and put it somewhere else. Is that I think, you know, maybe we're looking at it the wrong way is that, um, why would God say it's not good for the man to be alone? And then we end up in the world of sin that we are in today uh, is that we're thinking the whole time that uh, God is giving Adam a wife. God is giving Adam Eve. But you notice that in Genesis chapter five, verses one, it talks about the generations of earth that in the day that God created Adam, he then created Eve as well. I mean, he created his wife as, as well. Listen to me, no. It says for God created male and female and called them Adam. Is that Adam is but one person. He is but one man. He is singular. And so God is looking at Adam um, dating backwards and saying, listen, this ain't good. Man should be alone. I mean, if you think about it in context, if you read on down, it talks about um, how something uh, uh, was not um, how things, I mean, the, the Bible is clear in depiction in word form about what it is it's trying to relay over unto us, but we're prejudiced because it is that we learn certain things certain ways. And it is, I think, the same thing applies here when we go to the crucifix story. I think Luke chapter 22 is that uh, Jesus is on the cross and he says to the thief on the left, uh, I mean, the, the thief, uh, to the thief on the right, he says to him, uh, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. And we want to depict and I mean, it is a big issue in theological classes where it is that we will find out our, you know, whole debate about where the comma goes. God is like, you've you've missed it. You've missed it in the distraction of where the comma goes. You've missed the message. But this is part of the deception that the devil would use. A distraction is that I'm keeping you far away from your purpose, from your calling, from your assignment. Just don't perform. The distraction would be in the money. The distraction would be in the working. The distraction would be in everything that you see around you. And so one of the biggest things is the manipulation of interpretation is that we interpret things the wrong way a lot of the times. And believe you me, you're going to be biased when you're watching this scene is believing that, no, doc, you got it wrong. And I'm telling you, you have it wrong. And I'm telling you, at the end of the day, does it matter? It don't matter. It doesn't matter if you read it um, and God said that uh, man shouldn't be alone. Or if you read it uh, and God said uh, it's not good, man should be alone. 
whatever way you read it does not matter because we're in the state that we're in now. So whether God saw it was good or God saw it wasn't good, it doesn't matter. But I tell you what, though, what we can be clear on this is that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose and his plan is that you have to be intentional about what it is that you're doing on today. Man has been the hardest day for me just to get a motivational word out for myself. So today I am facing every kind of adverse distraction uh, is that man, uh, my, my, my son went to school today and he is whole consumed and not wanting to go. And then I get home and the baby uh, wants to stand up and walk and it is the cutest thing and I am consumed in that. And so I do not get it out a early morning word. I don't even get out a midday word. I don't even get it out an afternoon word. I am at Thursday evening putting out word for motivation on Thursday. And it's like, who are you motivating? What's the intent? What's the purpose? What's the passion? The time you sent consumed in consoling your son, the time you spent consumed in trying to find the few dollars that you lost or misplaced, the time you spent consumed in this and doing that, you've missed somebody. Now, Everybody say, like, what's for you? You won't miss is that, you, you know, um, you ain't going to miss what God has for you. And if it's for you, it's yours. And can't nobody take it from you. What God has for you, it is for you. Find me that scripture. Find me that verse. Find it for me. Because you can miss it. You absolutely can. The same way we miss the mark in sinning, it's the same way we miss the mark in somebody. That so You can get distracted and get off course. Is that if I go outside and I'm supposed to get the mail today to find out my light bill is due today and I don't get it, then tomorrow I've missed it. They're going to turn the lights off. You can miss people, too. People are predicated upon reason and will and freedom. You have to be intentional. You have to know not how the devil is attacking. Do not be consumed in that. We can be consumed in the distraction of how the enemy is being the enemy. You need not know that, but know that you fight in the strength of the Lord. Now, I don't know every, everything. I don't I can't understand everything. I, I don't I don't get everything. I don't want I, I can't interpret everything. But what I do know is if God is for me. He's more than a world against me. Believe that on today. Listen, I push you into the purposeful place. It is where you need to be on today is that it does not matter the time that you're in. It matters whose hand of the time holding. That you find yourself believing in. The God holds everything. He's in my today. He's in my tomorrow. He's in my yesterday. Believe in him. For he sets you free. He who the son sets free. Listen to me. He's free indeed. So before it is, I let you go. I need to tell you, it's not what you think it is. It's not what you believe it is. It's not what your insight or what your intelligence would believe to tell you through manipulation of what it is. We're going to get it wrong. Listen to me. We're going to get it wrong. And that's okay. Because on the cross, one of the last acts Jesus did, not because he's so burdened, not because his mind is so clouded, not even because the weight of sin is so heavy, but so it's one of the last things that you get is that this is pretty much all we preach now. Is uh, they, <laughs> they hung them high and stretched them wide. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what was the last thing he taught you? Forgive. So before I let you go, Jesus say, <laughs> Father, forgive them. They have no idea what they're really doing. That's for you on today. You have no idea what way to go, what you're doing, how you're being offensive. You have no idea. But you know what? It don't matter. Because God forgave you anyway. Listen, bless you. I love you. God loves you. More importantly, encourage yourself. You love you. Y'all have a great day.